Hey everybody, welcome back to the Shark Scrapper channel. So, I was asked to do another boxing video, uh, as opposed to an unboxing video. Uh, some of my viewers out there have, have wanted to know, you know, when I uh, get done scrapping, like this mountain of computers and I have all the boards and stuff like that, how do I box things up to go to board sort? Very good question. So, let's go ahead and do that. Um, one of the first things that you want to think about is that um, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. <clears throat> now, I have yet to have any uh, real trouble uh, shipping stuff through the usual carriers, knock on wood. Um, I have shipped stuff to board sort with the post office, with FedEx, with UPS. All of them have worked just fine. I get commercial rate commercial discounts from FedEx and um, UPS. And I use a company called Pirate Ship, which is fantastic if you if you ship a bunch of stuff. Uh, and they're very good at finding me the best rates through the Postal Service and FedEx, uh, excuse me, and UPS. So anyway, um, so this looks like a reasonable size box. And um, we're just gonna go ahead and tear out the box here. Now this is my postal scale. This is the postal scale will measure uh, two decimal points in the pounds, whereas the big floor scale goes in one pound increments. So 0.82. And uh, since the box is empty, I'm going to go ahead and write the tear weight on here, but. I will prob I'm just going to go ahead and uh, tear this now and we'll put a bunch of boards in here and get the weight for those boards. So let's see, what should we pack up first? Uh, I've got a bunch of CD-ROM boards, I've got a bunch of RAM. Let's go ahead and get the CD-ROM boards in here. Now uh, you, depending upon, you know, how frequently you're sending stuff to board sort, and what your situation is uh, it will drive how careful you want to be with uh, the way you pack your boxes. I try to be relatively careful, get as much stuff in as I can, alternating the boards up and down, switching the direction of the of the uh, connectors, that kind of stuff. Helps me to put get more boards in to a box. And, you know, the more boards you can get in for the box, it's, it's more efficient. The other reason that you want to pack your box as tightly as possible is because these boards can act like blades when the box is in shipping. And it's getting, I don't want to say, man, well, you know, it's not getting handled real well, right? Um, and... If you pack it tightly, there's less of a chance of the board shifting and potentially ripping the box and that kind of stuff. So a well tightly packed box not only gets you more money per pound, but it also uh, travels better and you have less risk of it being broken open on the way there. A bunch of little guys here. These little boards in here. All right. There we go. Now, uh, CD box is empty, so that goes back in its staging location. And these are all CD-ROM boards, so we'll go get the weight of the CD-ROM boards. We teared it out, so we have 10.86 pounds of CD boards. So I don't need to worry about that tear rate. <sighs> all right. And then I always like to put it on twice just to make sure, yeah, 10.86. All right, now with board sort, uh, you can go to two decimal places or one decimal point, you know, whatever your scale supports. They'll check the weights and pay, pay accordingly. It's no big deal. I'll just scratch that out, go CD-ROM, boards, 10.86.
All right, now, we're not gonna send a box that's half empty. So, what's next? Well, we got a bunch of RAM here. So, let's do some RAM. Can you fit in there? Yeah, you fit in there. Yeah, all right. Okay, so since we're gonna go ahead and put this full with just RAM, let's go ahead and tear out that box. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make O speed through loading this box with the RAM. Uh, just a couple of observations. You wanna to try to stack the RAM again as, as tightly as you can, uh, mainly because you wanna make sure that you're getting the most value for your shipping weight, but also so that it's not jostling around in there and potentially breaking through boxes and stuff. Do you have to pack it in a separate box and put it inside? No, you don't, you don't have to. Um, but this is a convenient way for me to keep it separated. You definitely need to separate it from the boards because you want, very, you want each different type of material you're selling to be clearly differentiated from each other. So there's no confusion on board sorts part um, what it is that they're getting and should be paying out for you. All right, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, CDs finished, and, I mean, excuse me, get the RAM finished and weigh those out here real quick. All right, now then, the short stick there, that's the RAM. I like to leave a sample behind so that when I am scrapping, if, if, the, if the container is just blank empty, sometimes I'm sitting there going, ah, oh, man, what was in there again? What did I, you know? So I like to leave a blank, a blank behind. Okay, now, there's still a lot of room in this box. So let's go ahead and get the RAM weighed out. We might put some other small things in this box uh, and take advantage of that space. Six point one seven. All right, gold ram six point one seven. All right, tear that. Now, whatever we add to this will show as a, an, an additional weight, unless it's something that I weigh separately anyway. Then I also want to write that on here. You'll see why. Gold RAM 6.17. Okay. All right, now what else do I have that I can use to take up some of that space for board sort? Here we go, we've got some tin silver RAM, 1.51. Now this uh, tin silver ram, <clears throat> we're going to wrap it up like your butcher would wrap up a piece of meat. This is packing paper from, from moving companies. I actually got this free. I found it during a street scrap, grabbed a whole bunch of it um, along with some boxes. That way I can just reuse the stuff. Uh, so this uh, packing paper is good as and long as, again, you keep the package nice and tight. And it's not, you know, real heavy kind of stuff. Now, as you see here, I'm I'm holding that ram good and tight, and then we're gonna wrap it, and it's gonna wrap over itself several times with the paper, as you'll see. So it makes for a real nice package. And then you tape it up and label it, and it's very well isolated uh, for board sort. The limitation for me is the size of my hands. All right, now, wrap that up there, you over here, you over here. Now we can do it this way with, with uh, this particular arrangement because 
this is going inside of another box. So we just label it silver ram. That, that way they know when they go to open this box, they will know that that is silver ram. All right. Now we still have a little bit of space here that we can take advantage of. Not exactly ideal, but I'm just taking up space. And instead of taking up space with stuff that's not gonna get me any money, I'm taking up space with stuff that'll get paid. Pinned to, I'm gonna write 2.02, .02, but when I do the board sort thing, I'm just gonna call it two pounds. All right. Now, again, I don't have to get too carried away about the taping here because it's going inside of another box. You wanna make sure that it stays separated so it doesn't come loose inside the box and cause board sort to have to try to figure out what's what because then you risk having it downgraded. P4. Pinned. All right, now, board sort goes inside here. They will have no problem understanding what's in here. The less rolling around goes on, the less risk of the box busting and stuff. Uh, you have. All right, so that again, this is going in a box, so I don't have to worry about it that much, but I don't want it to break open. So we'll just give it a little bit of a tape. There we go. CPUs. And that way, when the board sort guys open this up, they'll know that this is where the RAM and the CPUs are. All right, now we still have a little bit more space here. So, I had bagged up some ICs. So we have some flat packs here. 1.4 pounds of flat packs or ICs. And just to make sure that the plastic bag doesn't tear or rip, we're going to give you another wrap up too. Keep things good and tight. Those were high grade hard drive boards. HDD boards high 1.38. HDD high. And that should fit pretty nicely right down inside of there. There we go. Right. That's a nice good fit. So now what I can do is just take some paper and shove some paper down in here to tighten that all up. 
Now, you'll recall that I wrote on one of the box flaps what the materials were, uh, and then I and the weights, and then I took a picture of it. Uh, you can see that here. Now, the reason for the picture was so that I would know what was inside. I could have written it on a piece of paper or something like that, but you know, this this is what I use so that when I go into the board sort app. I can figure out what I'm selling. So now we're at boardsort.com. Uh, it's real easy to, you know, just go type in boardsort.com uh, and it'll take you to the web page. If you look across the top of the web page over towards the left, you will see where you can log in. So right now you see I'm logged in as Shark Scrapper. And then there's the payout rates, the tested CPU prices, which we're going to get to in just a minute, and sell material. Now, before we go to sell material, I want to talk about these tested CPU prices. Chris has made a big change, uh, two big changes, actually. The first one is he moved the price list up here to this front page. So if you click on that, you can see the prices and you also see what the second change is. Uh, Chris is now uh, treating the i-series CPUs as more of a generational family, not a specific CPU. So whereas you might have had the i5-2 and then several different numbers of twos, you know, 2400s or 2650s or whatever, they're just all together now. Um, so it makes it much simpler to sell your CPUs. Uh, you don't have to worry about these specific numbers anymore. You just need to know the family series that they're in. So that's a big change to how BoardSort is buying the i-series. And I do want to show you this all the way at the bottom. Look at this. The i7-12 family is 150 bucks for each CPU that, that is working. Now, granted, you're not going to probably find a whole lot of those, but, the, the, you know, Chris is offering some serious money for functional CPUs. Okay, now let's get back to uh, selling material. Okay, now the other thing I want to talk about, because I'm sure there's some of you that are very new to uh, scrapping, to board sort, when you go to board sort, this front page has a lot of good information right up front. Here you see the gold prices from Kitgo. Here you see select board sort payouts. This is informational. Um, if you look over here on the left, there's some more informational videos. Uh, there's an older video I did on how to make a, uh, an example of packing for board sort. So I don't know if they'll replace that with this newer one or what Chris will want to do. Uh, again, I'm making this video in response to requests from users. Um, but I want to draw your attention to this discussion forum tab here. When you click on discussion forum, it takes you to this page and there is a bunch of great information here. Uh, so the first one, boardsort.com help forum, when you click on that, um, these titles here. This is really good stuff, man. Before you ship to board sort, read this one. Chris goes through great detail on the things to be careful of, the things that are important. Uh, here's the announcement that they're buying tantalum. Uh, here's a discussion of partially harvested boards and what that's going to do to you. How to sell things to board sort. All right, there's some really important information and there's just a lot of good discussions about um, CPUs and wires and identification and, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So a lot of great information here uh, from BoardSort to uh, help you out. The what is the identification form. This has to be one of the most useful of the tabs because what you see here are people asking questions. What is this? What is this? What is this? and you get a good discussion and a bunch of good identifications on the different types of boards. Plus, you see right here, how to grade motherboards from, this is from BoardSort, okay? So 
there's lots of good information here on identifying things. And if you don't know what something is, you can post it here and get a lot of really good feedback. All right, I also wanna go back to the tested chip buying. So again, we go into discussion forms. We're gonna to go to the tested chip buying and we're gonna go here, tested, tested CPU buying program. This looks like it always did, but notice the difference here when you click on this now. Over here, you see it's much more simplified uh, how to sell these, these i-series CPUs. So if you had an i7-6 whatever, you just go right here and it would be $60 and you put how many of them you have uh, and it'll you know give you your, your, your payout. So Chris has made this much, much simpler for everybody. Okay, let's go in and sell our material. Now you have to be logged in in order to sell material. If you don't have an account, it's very easy to set up an account and it's free. Uh, so you, you set up that account and then you can go in here and click on sell material. All right, so we have the major categories, circuit boards, RAM, CPUs, cell phones. You will not find the tested CPUs in this category yet. I don't know what Chris is planning on for where that's going to go. Uh, but this is this is the CPUs by weight in this category. All right, so uh, let's just go ahead and knock through what we have. The first thing we have is CD-ROM boards. So we go to circuit boards, and we're going to go down here to find CD-ROM boards. We just scroll down, scroll down. CD-ROM boards. 5, 10 a pound, we have 10.86 pounds. And the decimals are fine. You don't have to convert pounds into ounces. That's no problem. And what you can see happens is it populates down here in this window. I've got 10.86 pounds of CD boards at 5, 10 a pound, so that's 55.39. Gold RAM, so let's expand the RAM category. Now you'll notice there's blank RAM, mixed RAM, gold finger shielded RAM, trimmed RAM, silver tin, and gold fingered RAM. So gold fingered RAM, $23 a pound. Wow. Uh, we have 6.17 pounds. And you can see that it's now listed down here. Uh, we also have silver RAM, so silver tin fingered RAM. We have 1.51 pounds. All right, so that's it for RAM. Okay, so when we go in here now, we see P4 green fiber with metal. And if you hover over it, the picture comes up. You can also left click on it and you can get the picture um, the angle isn't real good because you can't see the gold, the gold pins sticking out real well in this picture, but that's what we're looking for. So P4 green, uh, 850 a pound, and we have 2.02 pounds of those. And remember that was just a space filler, so that's fine. ICs and HDD boards. Um, I see, oh, you know what? I think the ICs were here in the CPUs, if I remember correctly. IC chips. Um, IC chips, no Dallas switches. Dallas switches are, you know, the big tall ones. They'll even say Dallas on them. All right, so um, IC chips, 1.4 pounds. Again, that was just some filler, taking up some space. You might as well get paid for it. And then the HDD boards, those are going to be back up here in the circuit boards. High grade non SATA hard drive board. And if you left click, you can see the big difference is it's these pins as opposed to a SATA connection. All right, so we have uh, over here, and that's $14 a pound. That's pretty cool. And what do we have? 1.38. Three, eight pounds of those. All right, so if we look down here, we see that this is a $262 payout. 
we're satisfied that with this, so we're going to say sell material. Uh, it will bring you here. And if you want to add pictures because you're not quite sure about something, you want to make sure Chris knows what it was, then you can go right here, choose file, add a picture, you know, a description of the picture of what it is. This is all pretty standard stuff, so I'm not worried about um, adding any pictures to this. Now, you can get paid by PayPal or you can get paid by check. I'm never in a big hurry here, so I'll just have them send me a check. Uh, I don't need PayPal. to. PayPal gets plenty of money from me. I don't need the money fast enough that I need to let PayPal get a cut on this one too. And then we're going to go Submit Request. All right, so now we have... The request is submitted. This is an actual quote from BoardSort. I also want to go down here. This request was generated. Here's the timestamp. And it will no longer be valid after March 3rd. Now, you absolutely want to make sure you do the next step, and that is put a copy of the invoice inside your box. There's a couple of ways to do that. You will get an email from Chris, and you can print it out put a copy of that in, that is an, a copy of the invoice email. Or right up here, you can print this copy of the invoice. I always print two copies of this. One goes into the box for board sort, and the other one goes in a file that I keep until I have been paid out. And that way I have it as a reference in case there's any questions. So here's our box. We've got everything packed in nice and tight. We've got our invoice printed out. And on top of everything, we're going to close this up and tape it uh, for shipping. And here's what it'll look like when it's all taped up. Now remember, shipping can get a little bit rough on these packages. So tape them up well use shipping grade tape and what you can see on this picture is I've actually taped it in one two three wraps so that it is good and tight and well protected against uh, you know the rough handling that it's going to get you know this is a two hundred and sixty two dollar box so I want to do everything that I can do to make sure that it's going to get there uh, in one piece, not be broken open, and those kind of things. And of course, you actually have to ship it. So um, I have an account with FedEx. I also have an account with a company called Pirate Ship, uh, which I highly recommend. Just Google Pirate Ship or PirateShip.com. I compared the rates, and in this case, uh, UPS Ground was twenty-one dollars and eighty-seven cents. FedEx Ground was thirty-two dollars and fifty-two cents. So I'm shipping it with the UPS ground at $21.87. That's right around my usual average of less than a dollar a pound, in this case, 87 cents a pound to ship this to board sort. Hey, look, I know I packed a lot of information in this video, not to mention a lot of good material into this small package. I understand if you need to come back a few times to watch it, digest it, it'll be here. Come back as many times as you need to. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you found it useful and this information meaningful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That's going to be the little round icon that will be in the middle. Of the two links that are going to take you to more of my scrapping videos. I hope you all have a great day and we'll see you on the next one.